Hello again, again guys. Um, Fusion 360 video today. Uh, I haven't heard so much talk about this in videos or stuff like that, but it comes down to there are st several ways you can add, end up printing something you designed in Fusion 360. Um, one of the ways is to just print the object directly. And I have heard some complaints from people, oh, but you shouldn't print using an SDL file. You should always select object or 3MF. The thing is, uh, it doesn't really matter what you're printing as. You just have to change the settings. Uh, if you export as an SDL file, the SDL file will be uh, not as uh, good as the original design in Fusion 360. I'll let's see if I can bring it up to you. Here, for instance. If you look closely here, <coughs> you can see you have the, the, the circle here is uh, it's not perfect. It's like a line, a line, a line, a line. So it creates a circle temporarily, but the more of these um, separations you have, the smoother a circle you get when you print. This is an SDL file I exported and imported into Orca Slicer. As you can see, it is um, kind of uh, kind of rough. And when you print this equally, let's see if I can find it. I don't know if you can see it here on the camera. But you can you can you can actually tell when you print that the ridges are there. See, I'm just using this. So it's basically just lighting up each of them with the with the light, and you can see that. Now, how do you make it smooth? Let's say you want to print something that is very very smooth. How do you how do you do that uh, from Fusion 360? Well, um, I haven't checked yet if you can adjust the settings of an SDL file for <sighs> sorry export but you can fix this when you print so let's say I have this uh, let's go back to Fusion 360 I'll make an object for you guys I'll just make a sketch come on sketch and I'll just make it into an, a circle and I'll just uh, I'll just simulate what I had before. There. Uh, finish sketch. Uh, I'll just extrude this upwards. So you get a body. Okay. So there we have the sample body. You can see this is very, very smooth because this is the design in Fusion 360. Okay. But when you, when you try to print this object, it's not as straightforward. You go to File, 3D Print, and then you have to select the object. You click this, and then you click the Preview Mesh. Now you can actually see what you're doing. Normally people don't fiddle with the Preview Mesh. I didn't for over a year, because uh, I didn't really think much about it. But you can see here, uh, up here, there are there several options to print with it. It's 3MF, which is basically what Orca Slicer uses, and STL, and STL, and object. Now, by default, these have different settings, but you can adjust the settings to be the same for each of these. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. So I, I just defaulted to STL, and that is when I uh, got the ridges here. Now, what happens if I, in Fusion 360, want to change that? I want to use STL still. I can click Preview Mesh, and now you can see that it doesn't look so bad. So let's try and just print it with those settings. Okay. So there you have it just an illustration so I made quite a large object but you can see here 
You see all the ridges here. This is like low polygon, they call it, uh, because it, it doesn't have a perfect circle. So let's just keep that in the background and let's try to print that a different way. File, print here, and then we click on Preview Mesh. And then you click on Refinement is high, it's fine, but you click on Refinement Options. And now it looks like this one is all the way to the left, but I can assure you it's not. Look what happens with the mesh when I drag the surf surface deviation means how much should the printable object resemble what is actually modeled. Uh, you cannot set this to zero to get an exact copy. Uh, for some reason it's uh, <coughs> not, not allowing it, it would probably be kind of demanding. But you can see what happens when you increase the uh, surface deviation. You can actually see it in Fusion 360 that you get these low polygon lines. And if I try to print this it would be really really edgy. But let's just go back, file, print and Preview Mesh, and we're back at default. But we go to Redefine Options, and I'm just going to take it all the way to the left. Ta-da! Suddenly, it has a lot more polygons. And it went from 1,088 to 4,832. Let's see that again. File. 3D print, preview mesh, mark the object you want to print, 1088, refinement, surface devia deviation, move that all the way to the left. And what happens when I print this? See, in case you want a normal deviation, maximum edge length, and aspect ratio. You can change these as well. Uh, I don't recommend it if you just want to have as perfect print as possible. And okay. Now we have the object here again. Let's take a look. This is the new object with over 4,800 polygons. And this... Let me see. This is the one we were looking at first. And... Uh, this is the one with... <coughs> 4,800 polygons. Let me see. I need to change the image a bit. Sorry about that. And so let's let's see that. And uh, so we have the first one, the thousand and eighty-eight polygons, and then we have the second one, which is four thousand eight hundred polygons. Which one do you think look better when printed? Yeah, this one. <laughs> but it will also take longer to print because it has more details to print. Not so much actually because the tool head just needs to travel the same distance, but there is like a little bit more movement going on. But that is, uh, is there any difference between uh, trying to print with uh, a different file format? Let's try that. File. 3D print, and let's say the, the, the base one for this is the preview mesh, uh, da, 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 da. let's see, don't save, okay, now I did a bit of an error, I'll have to make it again. Let's see. Uh, 
So, there we have it, more or less again. And we select the model, preview mesh. Now it comes up as 1200, number of triangles, 1200. And let's see, is there a difference in 3MF? It is not, still 1200. What about STL ASCII? No, it's still 1200. What about OBJ? Nope, still 1200. What if, is, is there any difference in how much you change here? Maybe, that one went all down to 791, which is even more accurate than the one we had before. So let's see if we can change it differently based on which uh, model type you had. Nope, that's 3MF. SDL. Nope, it's the same. Obj. Exactly the same. So basically, it doesn't really matter which file format you're printing in um, towards your slicer. Uh, you can just change the settings to correspond uh, to those specific settings. So if I press OBJ here, it doesn't get any better than if it was an STL file and I changed the same settings. See? The problem is if you export, it's different because I, I don't think you can, in Fusion 360 at least, you cannot just set the settings for an export in the same way. So this is the OBJ file. You can see you have to zoom very close to uh, be able to see the mesh lines. But this would be the same if I use STL and print it. The big problem with printing from Fusion 360, I think, is that you cannot print as you export. Which means that if you have several floating objects away from each other, you can export those as one file. Uh, but you cannot change the settings when you export to be like a high mesh model. Uh, I think if you export as an obj file, you get higher detail. Uh, but when you're printing, you cannot do that. You cannot say, okay, I want to print all these objects in this layout. And I wish Fusion 360 could uh, let you do that. So I hope that answered a few of the questions regarding uh, printing in Fusion 360. Um, and uh, I like to use this function when I want higher quality for single objects. Um, so, yeah, hope this video helped you and uh, see you in the next one.